This is clay. Mine came from the store, but you could even dig it up yourself from the earth, where the soil contains clay minerals. When you bake it, it becomes hard, so you can make an assortment of random objects, but people much more talented than me have been using it for thousands of years for things like pottery and buildings, and clay was even the first known writing medium. I find it delightful to be able to look at ancient clay tablets from the Babylonians 4,000 years ago. Many of them are mathematical and show an amazing level of knowledge and accuracy. Scribes were taught how to record the information onto the clay at a kind of scribe school, and it is within the relics of these schools that we can find the first known homework assignments. What's great is that it's actually not too hard to read these tablets for ourselves. The numbers are marked in the clay with a wedged tool. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and this is 10. So 20, 30, 40, 50, and since they're using base 60, this symbol is again 60. So it could be 60 or one, depending on its place within the number. To get the hang of it, let's start with the work of a first year student at scribe school, where the writing is a lot larger and clumsier than the more accomplished students. These are some relatively easy multiplication exercises. In the first row, we have 50 multiplied by 45. We would normally work that out to be 2,250 in our number system, but the answer written here looks like 3730. We can go ahead and see that this is indeed the same as what we would get. Since there is no symbol for zero, the place values are up for some interpretation, but for this one, the 30s is essentially the 1s position, and 37 is the 60s. So 37 times 60 plus 30 is equal to 2250. At school, we often have to memorize the multiplication tables, but something that all scribe students would have had to memorize is a table of reciprocals, which would make division a lot easier. This is an example of one such table written by a student, but apparently there are so many errors in it that an angry teacher has crossed it out completely on both sides. These tables would list that one third of 60 is 20, one fourth of 60 is 15, a fifth is 12, a sixth is 10, and so on. 60 is a great base to use because it divides into lots of numbers exactly. To divide by any number on this table, you just have to multiply by the reciprocal. But if your teacher is a big meanie, they might want you to divide by a weird number like 7 or 13, which 60 doesn't divide exactly into. These kind of problems are a lot harder. And you see an example of one of these questions on this tiny little tablet here. It's small and can fit easily in the palm of your hand, and it was likely intended for a student of scribe school to take it home with them to complete and return to the teacher with the solution. It is one of our earliest ever examples of homework. It asks the student to show that one, 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 divided by 13 is 4, 41, 37. For us, that number is 1 plus 60 plus 60 squared plus 60 cubed, which is 219,661. That we will want to divide by 13. And for us, doing it on a calculator, that gives 16,897. The answer shown on the tablet converted to our number system is 37 plus 41 times 60 plus 4 times 60 squared, 
which is the same, 16,897. The Babylonian students would likely have had to solve this by doing 60 cubed, 60 squared, 60 and 1, all individually divided by 13, and adding up the results and the remainders. I just find it amazing that not only were they doing pretty hard math problems, but the way they recorded their working and answers are so simple that we can actually understand and replicate them thousands of years later. Quick thank you to Casetify for sponsoring this portion of today's video. Now if I wanted my clay replicas to look a bit more authentic, I might add some scratches or damage to them. But to prevent my phone from getting the same, I have a protective case on it. Now I'm actually stoked to be working with Casetify for this video because it is through them that I've honestly received the best cases I've ever had. The one I have on my phone right now is the Impact case, which is slim and made from a shock absorbing chi tech material. It's rated drop proof up to 6.6 .6 feet, but for even more protection there is the Ultra Impact case, rated drop proof up to 9.8 feet. What really attracted me to this brand though are the designs. They are some of the nicest I've seen, which you can also customize or add your own writing. These are made from 50% recycled materials with an antimicrobial coating, and this one is fully compostable. If you have a newer iPhone, you can also get a MagSafe compatible case, so it works with wireless charging. So if you'd like to get a case for yourself, be sure to go to casetify.com slash tibbies today to get 15% off your order. And I'll put that link and the information down in the description. What got me interested in Babylonian math again recently was a paper that was published a few weeks ago by an Australian mathematician who had discovered the oldest known example of applied geometry. The tablet SI427 shows land boundaries and was drawn by a scribe who would have graduated school and gone out into the field. Practical issues of land ownership, sales and taxes is after all exactly what a scribe would have trained for. The land in question is split into very precise shapes, but to make truly perpendicular lines was not trivial. And something that is pretty special about this tablet is that it shows the Babylonians using Pythagorean triples in order to ensure that the perpendicular lines do indeed meet at right angles. It is Pythagoras' theorem that says in a right angle triangle a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, and a Pythagorean triple is three positive integers that meet this condition, such as 3, 4, and 5. This tablet was made at least a thousand years before Pythagoras was even born, but the concept was also used in India and China before then, so Pythagoras was hardly the first person to invent the idea anyway. Here you can see a triangle with sides 7, 30, 18, and 19, 30. For us, that's 7 and a half, 18 and 19 and a half, which is a scaled Pythagorean triple. It's just 1.5 times the triple 5, 12, 13. This rectangle here has the same dimensions and was probably used to keep these sides in equal length, which could then be extended to make the rest of the boundaries. This discovery of how they used Pythagorean triples was only published a few weeks ago, but we had already known that they knew trigonometry from another Babylonian tablet, Plimpton 322, a list of Pythagorean triples together with the information needed to resize them. This list likely belonged to a teacher, maybe at one of the scribe schools, and served as a powerful reference. The fact we are still learning so much about this ancient civilization and how they did mathematics is really exciting. Here are a few more fascinating homework problems. This palm sized tablet shows a circle drawn inside a square. And we believe the question for the student was to find the side length of the square, given the shortest distance from the circle to the square, 
and the area of the region between the circle and the square. If we label that area B, the distance D, which is written on there as 15, the side length of the square as S, and R as the radius of the circle, then we have these two equations, that the area of the square minus the area of the circle is B, and that 2 times the distance plus 2 times the radius of the circle is the side length of the square. We can eliminate the variable r and then doing a bit of work to get a quadratic that can be solved for s. For this problem the Babylonian approximation of pi was 3 and we've been able to figure out that the value of b was likely given as what we would call 2376.5625. The quadratic was one that seemed fairly tricky, so I used Wolfram Alpha to solve it, and that gave me the answer of 52 and a half, which matches up with what you'll see written on the top left of the tablet. It says 5230. And on the tablet you'll also find that value squared, which is the total area of the square. Isn't it amazing that this slab of such ancient clay can help us here in 2021 to sharpen our math skills, even without understanding any of the historical or cultural context of when it was written. Another amazing little tablet is this one here. YBC 7289 contains an approximation for the square root of 2, which is accurate to six decimal places, and that's the greatest known computational accuracy found anywhere in the ancient world. The square root of 2 is an infamous number. It's irrational, it goes on forever, and can't be written as the ratio of two integers. The rumor goes that Pythagoras and his squad were so shocked by this concept that they drowned a guy at sea for so much as suggesting it. But here are the Babylonians, a thousand years earlier, assigning it for homework. They have a square with side length 1, and that makes a triangle where we can use what we call Pythagoras's theorem to find the hypotenuse squared by adding up the squares of both the sides. In this case, the hypotenuse squared is 1 plus 1, so the hypotenuse is the square root of 2. The number given here on the tablet is 1, 24, 51, 10, which as a decimal is 1.414213. So now we know the ratio of the diagonal to the side of any square and can scale it. On the tablet one side is labeled 30 and say for example we wanted to find the diagonal of a square with side length 30, we would just do 30 times the square root of 2. And doing that gives us the last number here on the tablet. 42, 25, 35, which is 42.426 for us. So I guess maybe it's worth taking some care with your homework assignments, just in case they get studied by historians in the future and used to make judgments on how advanced your entire society was. Apparently only half the tablets still in existence have been translated, so I'm sure we will find plenty more interesting stories within them. And if you want to discover something new for yourself, then perhaps it is a topic worth pursuing further. I've listed all of my sources down in the description. Thanks for watching this video, and thanks to my Patreons for supporting my channel. And a special shout out to today's Patreon Cat of the Day, who is looking awfully dog-like, Mo.